Hi, my name is David, and this is a video about creating a dynamic Gantt chart within Excel. All the Gantt chart templates I could find are for looking at project timelines that last days, weeks, or months. I created this tool to look at parallel processes on shorter time frames, such as minutes or hours. This is suitable for a 24-7 production operation, for example. The final product is what you see here, a Gantt chart with a row for each process of interest, a variable timeline along the top, and simple color coding to say if the process is busy or not, or if it's double scheduled and also indicating the job number being processed at any given time. The goal of this video is to explain how all this works for you to be able to repurpose this tool to your own specific situation. This workbook can be found on my GitHub page, link in the description. So to put this together, the first thing we should look at is the schedule tab. For the sake of this example, we're looking at an imaginary garage where the work being done entails taking apart the exterior of a car, removing rust, shining and finish work, and assembling once again. The source data for the Gantt chart comes from the schedule tab. The table structure is that there is a row for each job that will move through the system, in this case, for each car or piece to be rust-proofed. For each job, there is the time that each work center will start that job, the time that the work material will be available for the next work center to begin, and the time at which the current work center will be done any necessary cleanup or tooling changes, so basically the time that it's able to begin on the next job. The specific times on the schedule tab are being generated by looking up the processing times for each SKU. For the sake of example, I just have four SKUs here, A, B, C, and D and the processing time, as well as post-processing time, for each, being randomly generated. These values represent a fraction of 24 hours. Coming back to the Schedule tab, I've created some simple formulas here so that the first job simply runs its course, each work center processing the material as soon as the previous one is done. For the second job and onwards, though, there is a max function that takes whichever time comes latest, the work piece being available to get going at the work center in question, or the work center being available after it finishes the post-processing coming off of the last job. So that, again, being the cleanup or the tool change required to start this next one. The most important thing to remember is that none of the particulars of how you construct this timetable are critical to the Gantt chart functioning. All you need to put this Gantt visualization into practice is a table where you have a column for the unique job ID for each row and the start and end times for each process in the workflow. The details of how you get all those timings is up to you and the specifics of your situation. So coming back to the Gantt chart sheet, here's how it works. On the left side are the row labels and the cells where you can customize the visualization parameters. On the right side, the columns are very thin and each column is representing a certain chunk of time in the visualization. The cells in the second row at column F and onwards store those time values to which that column refers. The starting date and time can be overridden by manually entering text in the yellow cells in column D. In column 3, a formula shows the day's date if the column in question is referring to midnight. In column 4, the formula prints out the hour whenever a column value falls on the start of the hour, or a hyphen if the column refers to the 20 or 30 minute mark. This nicely brackets the half hour mark when the default time interval of 10 minutes is used, but the interval can also be overridden with the cell in column D. Lastly, we can take a look behind the scenes at the hidden rows. For each process, there are four rows, three of which are hidden as they just provide supporting data for the conditional formatting and the visible fourth row. There isn't much to see when they're unhidden because the columns are too narrow to display their text. The user count row is taking the sum of an array to see how many jobs call for the first process work center to be in use at the time this column in particular refers to. The array is the result of two Boolean arrays. The first checks all values in the start time column of the schedule to see if they're less than the end time in question here. The second Boolean array checks all values in the end times column for process one to see if they are greater than the time this column refers to. If the start time is less than the time in question, and the end time is greater than the time in question, then that job is in this process at that time. That's how the Gantt chart knows it should be filled in. The job numbers row is the same, except that instead of summing the array of ones and zeros that was indicating which jobs were active at the point in time, it multiplies that same array by the unique job number column. Since we only expect one job number at a given time, this simply pulls out that job number. The row with the name CLR is for color. It looks at the previous two rows with an F statement yielding an E, F, or R if there are zero, one, or more than one jobs active for that process at that particular time. The exception is that the cell will contain the job number if that column is the first column pertaining to the job in that process. Lastly, the row that is displayed in the Gantt chart uses an if statement to further reduce the coding of E's, F's, and R's in numbers to just periods, commas, and apostrophes. Conditional formatting then colors in the cell based on the content, and for any content except the job numbers, 
the font color will be changed to match the fill color, making the code text essentially invisible. So that's the whirlwind tour of the sheet. If you want to add more rows to the Gantt chart because you have more processes, then follow the steps outlined in the sheet titled How to Add to Gantt. I hope you may have learned something with this video and that you might find the tool interesting and useful. Thanks for watching and take care.